Hey everyone, Michelle here and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my November wrap up. November was an okay month for me. <laughs> um, I planned to read eight books in November for my nephew's eighth birthday. I read six, so I read three quarters, which I'm not too gutted about. Um, I'll be honest, I did panic a bit halfway through the month because of a certain book, which I'll get to. Um, but yeah, no, a really good month for me. Um, yeah, so I'll stop blathering because I'm on my lunch and I ain't got long. So let's get into the wrap up. The first book I read in the month of November was Kingdom of the Wicked by Kerry Maniscalco. Yeah, so I give this book five stars. I absolutely adore Kerry's work. I adore Stalking Jack the Ripper series. So I knew I'd probably like this one. In this book, you follow two twins called Amelia and Victoria who live on the island of Sicily and are witches. But they're good witches. And then there's some bad witches, but you don't really hang out with the bad witches. Um, one night, Amelia's twin sister, Victoria, doesn't return home. And when Amelia goes out looking for her in the local monastery, I want to say, because it's like Abbey, it's like monks there, so yeah, I'll say monastery. Um, she finds Victoria's dead body and someone sticking their finger into it and licking her blood. Amelia goes through Victoria's possessions and finds a spell to summon a demon. Now, thinking she'll just summon a little demon, like not one of the ones that really you'd worry about. Instead, she <laughs> summons Wrath, one of the seven deadly sins. He says he's there to help her find out who killed Victoria because it turns out her twin was meant to be the Bride of Pride. So Pride can't leave hell for some reason. For Pride to leave hell, he has to marry a witch. Yeah, um, but you kind of get the feeling that Wrath isn't telling the whole truth. Um, I'm pretty sure I know what his secret may be, but I don't want to say. I love this book. I love this book. I love the enemies to friends to kind of lovers relationship between Amelia and Wrath. I love a bad boy. I do. I I I, I do. Um, Wrath. I am thinking he's not really that bad as he's made out to be in the past. Um. But, who knows, I have to say, in the second book, which comes out next year if I remember correctly, I need it like now. Um, I want to see more of Amelia's kick-ass grandma, or Nona, because, good gosh, I loved every scene with her in it. Kerry's writing is so enticing, and even when you're reading a chapter where you don't think there's much information that you need to know about, you still want to read it and you still want to know about it. Yeah, good start to the month. The second book I read in the month of November was The Stolen Sisters by Louise Jensen. I give this book four stars. This is a thriller mystery book where I didn't guess the twist at all, which is surprising. So in this book, you follow three sisters on the 20th anniversary of when they were kidnapped when they were younger and you go back and forth between now and then to see how the kidnapping happened and the effects on them and the on the 20th anniversary you see how one of them is very much struggling with what happened and when you get the reveal of who set up this kidnapping a lot of people are gonna if you've read this book are probably gonna be sat there going i guess straight away i genuinely didn't I liked that though, um, there were a couple of obvious red herrings, I have to say, which kind of is why I didn't give this book five stars, but I really, really enjoyed it and I'm actually looking forward now to going and finding more of Louise's work and adding that to my repertoire. The third book I read in the month of November was The Trials of Apollo, The Tower of Nero by Rick Riordan. This is the fifth and final book in the Trials of Apollo series and the final book in the Percy Jackson world. Obviously it has to be five stars. 
I adore Rick's work. Like Percy Jackson, I started reading when I was falling out of love of reading. So I I love Rick <laughs> love I love Rick's works and thinking you tell. Um, I'm not going to spoil this too much because it is the last book in a series. But I'll just say the ending made me happy and sad at the same time. I'm glad he's ending it now because I think if he carried on in the Percy Jackson world, I'd fall out of love of it because it wouldn't be the characters that I know and love because I'd be older. And you try, I think... <laughs> I think he may go, if he did carry on, I think he may have gone over the same ground again and again and again, which wouldn't have been good. I am looking forward to reading more of Rick's work. He does have the Magnus Chase series, which is about Norse mythology and the Cain siblings trilogy, which is about Egyptian gods. I have read the first book in the Cain Chronicles, I think it's called. I loved it. So I'm kind of looking forward to carrying his work through them series. The fourth book I read in the month of November was Strangers by C.L. Taylor. This was another five star book. C.L. or as I call her Callie can do no wrong in my eyes. Her books are one of my go-to books. I always pre-order them on paperback which means I do have to wait a while but it goes with the rest of the series so <laughs> it's not happening. Um, in this book you follow three characters who seemingly have no links to each other and you find out <laughs> how do i spell this without spoiling it basically um you have ursula who turns out likes to steal things to make her feel better she gets kicked out of her friend's place because of this and goes to a house share with an old man called edward who has all these rules and basically says you're not allowed in my room and you're not allowed in the basement you also follow Gareth, who is a security guard in a shopping mall where Ursula's favourite shop is. And his dad went missing when he was younger and his mum now has dementia, but keeps mentioning about going to see his dad and receives postcards from his long dead father. The third character you follow is called Alice, who is a manager in Ursula's favourite store. Um, who meets up with a guy in a pub for a lunch date. He's very, very drunk, tries something on her and she runs away. But there is a guy in the pub who has watched this and runs back with her to give her her purse. And they start a relationship which ends up with Alice being stalked. And basically all three of the storylines come together in the end. I'm not going to say how or why, but... Love it, love it, love it. Like I said, Seal Taylor cannot do no wrong. And I'll also, as this story, these three storylines go on, there's also a background story about guys being found in the river who are dead and people are like, and you kind of follow like a Twitter thread for it and it's like, oh, it's murderer or people are like, no, it's just people who are drunk. And then you have the last chapter. I did not expect that killer. Like that, this story, this background, storyline is nothing to do with our main three characters at all but Callie still wraps up in the last chapter which I was very surprised by but I love it and I would love if she wrote a book about someone trying to figure out who that killer is because yes love it please <sighs> now on to the book that I absolutely Oh, I'm in two minds. I hated the first half of this book. It dragged. Second half made up a little bit. And that book is A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. I gave this book three stars, but on reflection it's probably two and a half. Oh, the info dump. The info dump at the beginning of this book. I hated it. I don't throw it like this has been compared to the Harry Potter series, which I kind of get. But in that series, you follow, follow Harry through each year of him at Hogwarts. This book starts in the third year of this character's <laughs> existence at this school. Um, so if you don't know what this book's about, you follow a girl called 
Elle, who is kind of a bit of an anti-hero. Um, yeah, she's an anti-hero of the school of magic. She's kind of seen as the outcast and then she has to work with everyone to kind of help people. It's a bit complicated, I have to say. Um, and I'll be honest, because I didn't like the first half of this book, a lot of that's gone from my memory. Um, but what I remember is a lot of info dumping, basically three years of schooling in like a couple of hundred pages. Literally, that's how it is. And you literally won't learn, you'd learn one thing, so then we on to something else in the next paragraph, and then you'd have nothing for a couple, and then you'd have more. And it was literally just like, why? Why? Why not start in year two? Start in year two, get all your info dump out of the way, and then move on to the, the second half of this book, which could have been your third book. Your second book, sorry. The second half I loved, once you've got past all the information and you realise what relationships are like in this school, it was great and the action started and I loved it. The second half of this book is the only reason I want to buy the second book. I literally nearly got to 50% and I was messaging my friend going, I want to do an F. I think for like the first couple hundred pages, it took me like four days to read this because I literally I picked it up, read like about 50 and put it down for like two days because I was like, I don't want to read it. I don't want to read this massive pile of information. Um, I know other booktubers and people who read this book love that. I don't. You also have the issue of the stereotypes. Now, there is the one that everyone knows about the locks. Uh, my friend who is from Spain pointed out another stereotype to myself um, when we were talking about it. And you also have the stereotype of someone who isn't from America or England, like a Western country, is the anti-hero, is seen as a bad guy. Now, if Naomi had gone with that and had a character who embraced being the bad anti-hero, put it this way, her own grandma, the first time she met her, had a prophecy about this character. You don't find out what this prophecy is though. All you know is grandma had a prophecy and um, my uncles came to try and kill me while we were in India. So mum took me and we went back to Wales. And then apparently the witch community knows she's a bad guy. Literally that's it. You don't find out what the prophecy is. But then she has to be saved by the guy from New York who's obviously pale and blonde hair and the good. And he's like the son of the person who's going to take over their coffin. It's stereotypical. It is stereotypical. I don't like it. And it's literally like the West don't like the East. So there's a Dubai coven. And because this guy is hanging around with this Andy hero and she sits where the Dubai coven sits, the New York coven want to kill her. Because if she they think she's gonna take their guy. It's just so stereotypical. I'm hoping it doesn't carry on the second book because I may have to give up on this series, but yeah, two and a half stars. And then the last book I read in November was He Started It by Samantha Downing. Two stars. Ugh, I should have DNF this book. Um, so in this book, you follow three siblings who go to their grandfather's um, will reading ceremony. And for them to inherit, they have to go back and retrace a childhood road trip they did with their grandfather and things happen and that's how much I didn't like this book going to be honest um I gave it two stars just because there was one character I liked literally one character I liked And it wasn't even a main character. I think I wasn't meant to like her, but I did. Because she was the only one who's fucking obvious what's happening. Pardon my French. Ugh. Three main characters I detested. I was literally like, nah, it, Nah. The whole twists and turns. Good gosh. You did need to introduce a fourth grandchild, you didn't. At all. 
because that storyline went nowhere and nowhere sorry and she had actions that turned me off her straight away no didn't like this book um i will be doing an unhaul if you follow me on instagram you'll see why i'm doing a book unhaul at the end of the year and why i do them every year yeah this is going to oxfam Right, going to be a nice short and quick ending because I'm actually overrunning for lunch, so sorry. Um, but yeah, there are all seven, sorry, all six books I read for the month of November. Hit and miss month. Um, I'm about halfway through the Clear Your Shit Readathon. Um, I'm about 10% of the way, I want to say, through uh, my third book of December. So seeing as it's the 7th of December today, I think I'm pretty much on track. Um, but yeah, that was my November wrap up. Um, if you read any of these books and you have similar thoughts to me or you're like, Michelle, I think actually you may be reading this book wrong, comment down below. Let me know. If you don't want to comment down below, please come and message me on Twitter or on Instagram. I will put my apps down below. I will also put my Goodreads um, link there if you want to come follow me on there. I'm always open to new friends. Um, and until next week's video, bye guys.